Hi, Andreas from Cloudonaut here. This week's video is about AWS Data Sync. I will unbox the service for you. Why? Because AWS announced a few new features recently, and that's the perfect time to dive into that service a little bit deeper. So what is this video about? So first of all, um, I will show you some use cases. When can you make use of AWS Data Sync? Second, um, we will dive into the functionality. How does it work? And then of course, there will be demos. Do you back up or snapshot the data that you store on S3? Probably not, because there is no easy way to do so. Yes, I know we have S3 versioning, but that's on object level. You're not snapshotting the whole bucket. If you want to create snapshots of an S3 bucket, you could use DataSync to do so, because DataSync allows you to copy the data from your S3 bucket to an EFS file system. And AWS Backup, another service, allows you to create snapshots of the EFS file system. So by combining those three services together, you can implement S3 snapshots. Let's jump into a demo right away. So how to copy data from an S3 bucket to an EFS file system. I created a bucket already. The bucket contains screenshots that I've uploaded from my MacBook. Also, I created an EFS file system. This one is mounted uh, on this EC2 instance. Uh, as you can see, mount EFS. So let's check quickly. Um, so there's nothing in that file system at the moment. It's empty. So let's change that. So back to the management console and uh, let's jump to the data sync uh, service. I already created a so-called task. So the task is configured to copy the data from the S3 bucket to the EFS file system. And what I do now is I start this task and now this runs and will copy the data from S3 to EFS. The task execution completed. Let's check the EFS file system. Oh wow, so DataSync copied the files from the S3 bucket to our EFS file system, exactly what we expected. But DataSync is not only for copying data between AWS services, you can use it to synchronize data from your AWS environment to your on-prem environment as well. So for example, if you want to copy the data from your S3 bucket to an on-premises NFS share for disaster recovery purposes, for example, in case of a breach or an outage. Another challenge that I see when consulting clients quite often is that you have to copy data from on-prem to AWS to share data between legacy and cloud native applications. And such a file share can be implemented with the help of DataSync as well. So you can copy, for example, uh, a file once a day from a local NFS share to an S3 bucket so that a cloud native application can pick it up and process it in the cloud. Let's talk about the functionality of DataSync a little bit more. First, locations. So location can be a source or a destination for a data sync and supported are on the on-premises side, SMB, NFS and self-managed object store. And on AWS side, we have S3, EFS, which we already seen in the demo. And then there is FSx for Windows file systems and Snowcon. What are the key features of data sync? First of all, AWS DataSync is optimized to transfer your data at high speed. So no matter if it's within AWS or over um, the internet. So it's optimized to transfer your data with up to 10 gigabits per second. So that's the first selling point of it, I would say. The second one is you can schedule sync jobs. So for example, once a day or every hour, you can synchronize the data between the source and the destination. And another important feature, in my opinion, is DataSync validates the data. So what they do is they create checksums and also they compare the metadata of the data after um, a task has executed successfully. 
When unboxing an AWS service, it is important to talk about the costs as well. First, if you use DataSync, you pay for the data that is transferred by DataSync per gigabyte. So that's the first thing that you have to know. But then there's more. If you use S3 as a source or destination, you pay for read and write requests to your buckets as well. So that can be very little or very much depending on the number of objects that you're transferring and synchronizing here. Next, um, if data leaves a region, an AWS region, you pay for that traffic as well. So that is something you have to keep in mind for copying data to on-premises environments or to other regions. And last but not least, when you use EFS, there's a throughput limit, which can be either bursting or provisioned. And the traffic that comes uh, from data sync counts to those throughput limits as well. So that is something you have to keep in mind as well. Last but not least, I want to demo how to use Terraform to configure a data sync task. Why Terraform? Because I like it more and more and also CloudFormation does not support data sync at all. So that's a good reason, right? So let's jump into that. So I already prepared a little bit of a skeleton for of that Terraform configuration file. Um, so that we only need to create the main parts, which is the data sync locations. So for the source S3 and the destination EFS, as well as the data sync task. So let's do that quickly. So we need a new resource. We need data sync um, location S3. And um, so that is the source of uh, our, for the data sync job. We need to define the S3 bucket here. So S3 bucket demo.rn is the bucket that I have created here already. Um, then you also can define the subdirectory. I'm just using root, which means I want to copy everything, synchronize everything. And we need an IAM role to grant access to the data sync job um, to access the data stored in the F3 bucket. So let's do that as well. And there is an IAM role here created uh, already, data sync and we need the arm for that. So that is the source of the data. Then we need the destination, which is EFS. This is a little bit different. Um, data sync location EFS. Uh, so it starts uh, very similarly. We define the EFS file system. Um, the file system arm. And now it's a little bit different because EFS is only accessible within a VPC. So we need to define a VPC or Elastic Network configuration um, stuff here. So the EC2 config is what it's called in here. We need to define a security group. So that's the security group that grants the data sync task access to EFS over the network. So security group, um, data sync. security group data sync dot arm and we also have to specify a subnet so where to run the job and there we need a subnet okay so one one note here so this was something i was stumbling upon is you define a single subnet here so which means this task runs in a single subnet in a single availability zone. So this is probably not very fault tolerant. So in case the availability zone is not reachable, your task will not uh, be able to access the EFS file system as well. So yeah, that's not 100% uh, multi-asset, but maybe that's something AWS will work on in the future. So last but not least, let's create the data sync task. Uh, so this is another resource, AWS data sync uh, task. And uh, this needs a name. So let's do demo at three to EFS. And now you define the source, which we already specified. Data sync S3 is our source. And the destination, which is um, the EFS location that we created before. Okay, so that's it. So that's the task definition for the data sync job. And um, that's all we need. By the way, 
there are a few other resources here. I scroll through them very quickly. So this is the security groups, um, the IAM roles. Uh, I also create an EC2 instance so that you can mount the EFS file system. Yeah, and the template includes the three bucket and the file system as well. So if you want to check out the whole example, you will find the code attached to the video as well. I really enjoyed unboxing AWS DataSync for you. If you have any questions, please go to community.cloudonout.io where there is a special area for Cloudonaut Plus subscribers. You will find this video posted there already and you can just add your questions there and I'm happy to answer them. See you again next week. Bye.